for example number three, we want to be able to define the rational zero theorem. The rational zero theorem states that if the polynomial f of x is equal to the following, has an integer coefficient, then every rational zero of f of x has the form p over q, where p is the factor of the constant term, meaning that p is the factor of that constant term. And then q is the factor of the leading coefficient, which is a subscript n. So that would be q. And then when the leading coefficient is 1, the possible rational zeros are the factors of the constant term. So how do we go about this? Well, given a polynomial function f of x, we're going to use the rational zero theorem to find rational zeros. Step 1. We're going to determine all factors of the constant term and all factors of the leading coefficient. Step 2. We're going to determine all possible values of p over q, where p is a factor of the constant term and q is a factor of the leading coefficient. And then be sure to include both positive and negative candidates. Step 3. We're going to determine which possible zeros are actual zeros by evaluating each case of f of p of q. So we're going to list all possible rational zeros of f of x which is equal to 2x to the fourth minus 5x cubed plus x squared minus 4. The only possible rational zeros of f of x are the quotients of the factors of the last term which is negative 4 and the factors of the leading coefficient 2. So the last term last co constant term, we define that as p, and p is going to be equal to negative 4. The leading coefficient q is the value of 2. So since the constant term is negative 4, we're going to list all the factors of negative 4. And we have to include the positive and negatives. So we know 1 is a factor of negative 4, but positive and negative 1 is a factor of negative 4. We also know that 2 is a factor of 4. So plus or minus 2 is a factor of 4. And then we also know that 4 is a factor of 4, so it's plus or minus 4. The leading coefficient is 2, and now we're going to list the factors of 2. And that represents q. So that's plus or minus 1 is a factor of 2, and plus or minus 2 is a factor of 2. So those are all the factors of 2. Now, if any of the four real zeros are rational zeros, then they will be one of the following factors of negative 4, divided by one of the factors of 2. So you see the values of p. We have plus or minus 1 divided by 1. We have plus or minus 1 divided by plus or minus 2. We also have plus or minus 2 divided by plus or minus 1, plus or minus 2 divided by plus or minus 2. And then we have plus or minus 4 divided by plus or minus 1. And then plus or minus 4 divided by plus or minus 2. Now make note here that this 1 divided by this 1, this 2 divided by this 2 is equal to 1. And then we also know that 4 divided by 2 is equal to 2. And so we have p over q. Again, the numerator p is the factors of the last term. Q is the factors of the first term. So all the rational possible zeros for this function is plus or minus 1, plus or minus 2, plus or minus 4, and plus or minus 1 half.